streaming now as the darkness vanished away see in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day gather us in the lost and forsaken gather us in the blind and the lame call to us now and we shall awaken we shall arise at the sound of our name we are the young our lives are a mystery we are the old who yearn for your face we have been sung throughout all of history called to be light to the whole human race gather us in the rich and the haughty gather us in the proud and the strong give us a heart so meek and so lowly give us the courage to enter the song In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we pray together today on the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, it might be worthwhile to reflect on the Eucharist and our attitude toward it, not just the elements of the body and blood, but the entire action that we do together at Jesus' command. What difference does this weekly celebration make in your life? Gathering today on this feast of the body and blood of Christ, we commend ourselves in a special way to Christ who is our life. We ask him to renew the power of his life within us, as we now open our hearts to receive his healing power. Lord Jesus, you are food for the journey. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the wine of compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us and satisfy our thirst so that we may feed others. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand the right hand of the father have mercy on us Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with 
the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. wonderful sacraments have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may experience always in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. Who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the blood of the covenant, excuse me, taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 80. The name of God, number 80. I will take the cup of life, I will call God's name all my days. I will take the cup of life, I will call God's name all my days. Can I make a return for the goodness of God? This saving cup I will bless and sing and call the name of God. I will take the cup of life, I will call God's name all my days. The dying of those who keep faith 
is precious to our God. I am your servant, called from your hands. You have set me free. I will take the cup of life. I will call God's name all my days. To you I will offer my thanks and call upon your name. You are my promise for all to see. I love your name, O oh God. I will take the cup of life. I will call God's name all my days. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who were defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. Cleanse our consciousness from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, 
Jesus' dis disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his, dis his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my dis disciples? Then he will show you a large, a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a whole lot of blood in our readings this weekend. Did you notice? There's blood everywhere. It's getting uh, sprayed on, on the people. It's, um, Christ is giving his blood to his disciples. There's blood everywhere. And uh, typically, we have a little bit of an, an aversion to blood. At least I do. Um, I remember the day I lost my first tooth. I was in first grade, and I had a loose tooth. And for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to eat a caramel apple. So I bit right into that apple, and sure enough, I lost my, my tooth in it. And I bled, actually quite a bit. It wasn't quite ready, but I was, you know, biting down on it. And the moment I saw that blood, I don't, I don't know whether it was because I was actually light, lightheaded, because I was losing blood, or because I was just, just shocked at seeing uh, blood, I passed out. <laughs> um, my poor teacher, looking back, oh my goodness. I was okay, I lived... But blood, it, it's, uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a fear of blood. There's a, there's a, yeah, it's a visceral thing. It evokes much emotion when we see blood. And our Lord, our God, throughout the whole course of history, in a way, he's fix, fixated on blood. A lot of blood in the story of the people of Israel, in the story of Jesus Christ. Why blood? In ancient cult cultures, and even uh, to this day, blood has always been seen as a life force. It's the life force of an animal. Uh, as long as that blood is flowing and alive in the animal, in the person, they have life. If you lose all your blood, you lose your life. Uh, in, uh, in ancient Cultures around the, the time of the, of the people of Israel in the Old Testament, there were a lot of animal sacrifices. And one of the things that they would do was that they would drink the blood of, of the animal that they had slain. And God calls the people of Israel apart to not do that. He orders them never to drink the blood of the sacrifice of an animal. 
Because as that was being done ritually, what was being said was the person was drinking the life force of that beast. Uh, and may, maybe it was a bull, and they wanted the strength or the virility of the bull. But God reveals to us that we are greater than the beasts. Our life and our strength is a strength in life that is greater in quality than the life of the beast. To drink the life of the beast would be to degrade us. We have a strength and a power that is the power of love, um, revealed above all to us in, in Christ. We live on a, on a higher plane than the beasts. And because of this, um, because it was made clear to the people of Israel that they should never drink the blood of the sacrifice, you can see why the people were so aghast when Jesus now comes and orders them to drink his blood. They are very much aghast at this proposal. Christ wants us to drink his blood. Why is this? What is going on? In Christ, the sacrifice is qualitative completely different than the sacrifice of any animal. Because in drinking the blood of Christ, we drink the life of God. We drink a life force that is greater than we are. It actually raises us in dignity and gives us a life that is greater than ours. It's the eternal life which our Lord invites us in a very real way, a visceral way, a true way, a real way, a substantial way. He invites us to enter into communion with the life of God, with the, the eternal life that he pours out on us. And the effects of it are, as we heard in our second reading, eternal redemption, eternal healing, a power that is greater than ours. Uh, a few years ago, I was watching one of those, those specials on Nova, or maybe it was National um, Geographic, whatever it was, and it was, a, it was a special on blood. It was really interesting. It was all about our medical uh, knowledge of blood. I learned a lot. It was really interesting. Uh, we know a lot about blood, um, and I, I wasn't taking notes that day, but what stuck with me were two qualities of blood that really came out. One is that our blood has a tremendous healing power. It's amazing. Our blood is continually adapting to the needs of our body. Where there is healing that is needed, our blood diagnoses it and then, and then changes itself in order to be able to heal wherever the healing is needed. And it rushes to that spot. I have no idea how. It's amazing. It's like the marvel of our body. It has a healing property. As well, it was really interesting to discover the, the power of blood to protect us. Uh, it has a protective quality. Uh, on this special, what they did was they had a man uh, strapped up with all kinds of uh, diodes and, and whatever um, detect, uh, detectors on his body to, to watch what was going on in his blood. And they had him kayak down Whitewater, Rap, uh, Whitewater Rapids. And as he saw the Whitewater Rapids coming about 100 yards away, his blood responded by infusing itself with all kinds of white blood cells. It was something like uh, a third more white blood cells were, were, were poured in, into his body as he prepared to go in to this danger of the Whitewater Rapids. The blood knew that danger was imminent, and so it, it uh, poured out its protective power to help you and, and get, uh, get you ready for the trauma that is coming. Our Lord fills us with his blood, with the power of his blood, and it has these healing properties. It heals us in a deep, deep way. It heals us eternally. It heals us of our sin. As well, it has a, a, a great power to protect us. 
our Lord in the Eucharist gives us his very self to fill us with his protection. And we need it. Our life is crazy. We never know what, what's, what's coming next. We may even be aware of, of dangers that are to come. In coming here and being united to the life of our Lord God, we're filled with his protection. He protects us. In the mystery of the Eucharist, Jesus wants to give us his whole self, his very being. Um, and not only in a way that is in our minds or is evocative or is symbolic, but in a way that is real. He gives us his whole self, body and, and soul. He fills us with the power of his life. It's a life that is real. It is true. It is substantial. It has come to be with us, to dwell among us, not only in our minds, but truly um, united to us, body and blood, soul, and divinity. I'm going to close with an invitation to just, just do a little bit of, of uh, homework. Um, if you've never read about the, the Eucharistic miracles that have happened throughout the course of, of history, check them out. Go Google them. They're incredible stories. Moments where the Eucharist has bled. And usually it's in a moment where faith in the Eucharist and in our belief that the bread and the wine are truly transformed, and in fact not only transformed, they're transubstantiated, they're changed in their very substance or being into the body and blood of Christ, where that has not been clear or not been believed in, there have been miracles where the host has bled at Mass or where the host has actually transformed into flesh. One of the most recent ones was in 1996. I was in, uh, in, in Buenos Aires, and there was a host that had been left uh, under, a, under a candle holder and was desecrated. And a lady found it and gave it to her 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 priest. And so what he did was he put it in a, in a cup of water, which is what we do whenever there's a host that's been desecrated, so that it's able to dissolve. And when they came back the next day, it had trans transformed into a piece of flesh. And it stayed that way for three years. In 1999, they brought it to the bishop, who was uh, Jorge Bergoglio, who is now our, our Pope, Pope Francis. And he had an, had an investigation done on this, and what they discovered was that it was a piece of cardiac tissue, and the blood type was AB. In every single Eucharistic miracle that has happened, as we've now uh, done modern scientific studies on them, the blood type is always the same. It's AB, which is a very rare blood type. Our Lord, in the Eucharist, he gives us himself, truly. He pours out his life for us, truly, in a way that is real, he unites himself to us to fill us with the power of his life, which heals and protects us day in and day out. In the power of his blood, in the blood of the Lamb, we are united to our God and to one another in the power of God's life and love. Let's ask the grace today to open our hearts to the power and the wonder of these mysteries, these mysteries which fill us with the life of God. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made. Jesus established a new covenant in his blood through his sacrificial offering of his life. As sharers in this covenant, through our partaking of the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist, let us confidently offer to God our prayers and petitions. Please respond, bread of life, hear our prayer. For the church around the world, that we may continue to build up the body of Christ as we give witness to our faith in our challenging times. We play, pray, bread of life, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, that they may find just ways to settle disputes, whether with other countries or among their own citizens, and avoid strife and bloodshed. We pray, bread of life, hear our prayer. For those who grow the grain and grapes that make our bread and wine, and all those who farm our land and grow our food, that they may be blessed with good weather and a successful growing season, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. For all who share the Eucharist with the elderly and the homebound, that they be blessed with patience, loving hearts, and an appreciation of life, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. For the faithful of our community, that they may grow in appreciation of and participation in adoration and Eucharistic devotion, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. For all who have died this week, Edward Arnold, William Carey, and Gretchen Horning Price, and especially those remembered at this Mass, Richard and Isabel Shingen. We pray. Lord, bless life, hear our prayer. And for the intentions that we hold in the quiet of our hearts, we pray. Bread, Bread of, of life, life hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, your Son offered his body and blood to redeem us in our, our, our sinfulness and to nourish us as we continue his mission. May we be strengthened in this holy Eucharist as we make these prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 945, I Am the Bread of Life. 945. Is 
is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. And I will of the Son of Man and drink of his blood and drink of his blood you shall not have life within you and I will raise you up and I will brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in this mystery. In the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper, with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful, by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we, we pray <clears throat> upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this, of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. just one announcement today, which is that with summer vacation time, you might think that there's not a lot going on here at the parish, but if you look in our bulletin and website, you'll see that there are activities, speakers, mass at Walleye Weekend, our summer formation program, and sign up for 
Vacation Bible School and a variety of other things that are going on right now. Um, there's many ways of making Holy Family a part of your summers. So uh, please do stick with us. It's great. And th these months are great. Uh, they are a little bit quieter, and yet, and yet we also um, have the free time to do these extra things. Um, if you are visiting us this weekend, we offer you a warm welcome. Uh, uh, we know that now begins the, the travel time when there might be visitors passing through. So um, thank you for coming today, and we are glad that you made Mass with us a part of your trip and journey. Let us rise and pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord our God, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 576, Canticle of the Sun, 576. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the Son, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord Praise for the wind that blows through the trees the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze, they blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, Sing to the glory 